Okay. So this is the final event today. It's a new commission by Irene Anastas and Rene Gabri. Um, if everyone can please take their seats. We're tight on time, um, and it's a live performance work. So if everyone can please take their seats. Um, I'm just gonna, I mean, I'm incredibly, um, yeah, I mean, this is an, inc yeah, an incredible work. Um, that has been in conversation, and I feel incredibly honored to be able to introduce it and grateful that they agreed um, to be part of the exhibition. Irina Anastas and Rene Gebre were born in occupied Palestine and Iran, respectively. They started collaborating in 1999 as part of 16 Beaver Group, a collective space um, in New York, uh, in which actually they've worked a lot with also um, Harun Faroqi. Um, and their work has been exhibited at the showroom. Documenta 13, the Venice Biennial, Sharjah Biennial, among others. Um, they are in the building. They uh, have set up a space in which they will be performing and creating a film live. Um, and they asked me to say a few words, and they will be joining us after, let's say, the film concludes or um, completes. Um, and so, in their words, we have tried to make a kind of film in which the distinction between means and ends have become indistinguishable. And this may pose a challenge for viewers because most of us are not used to watching films from this level of intention. But in this way, in the spirit of, Har of Harun, from which we also draw the courage to revisit a work which was never finished, whatever is the outcome, we hope it exercises another muscle which has that her remained underused, both in us as well as those who come into contact with this work, or rather the elimination of certain reflexes of viewership, a kind of morality of viewership, which does not allow what is actually at stake in the work to become visible, perceptible. Um, and it's titled, A Letter to Harun, A Postscript to What Everybody Knows. Um, so if we can turn the projector on. No, we're not. Okay, no problem. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This one. White balance of what? Don't worry. I'm gonna just put it down here. No? Fine. Put the uh, cover of the page. Yeah. yeah. Then I can also turn it around. Up down there. Three. Down there, yeah? But the playing one is this now.
Dear Haru, to write across time, to write through time, you have left us and with so much which still remains to be taken up, reconsidered, examined, questioned. Thus, any task of responding to you, thinking with you, especially in your absence, is rendered all the more difficult. One can begin then in the middle, within and through a world of images. Handheld shots, aerial shots, surveillance footage, simulators, testimonies, renderings, prosthetic vision machines, animations, workers leaving factories, famed labor, forced labor, unseen labor, weaving, editing, uncut, oblique sounds, angles, permissions, admonitions, advertisements, techniques, tools, hands, bricks, storefronts, the pensive faces as they await their salvation. The bus or train which may take them home, after work, after what? Which place? Which home? Who's that? We write to you from a displacement of time and place. We write you from that middle ground as we have been walking most of our lives, between eviction and exodus. We write you through that immense history of images created in the field of struggle and the explosive imaginaries they aspire to nurture to which your own singular way, in your own, in your own, in your own, in your own, in your own singular way, you expanded and enriched. So there, we have begun, dear Harun, to once again address you and resume in some way a hidden conversation which unfolds. Yes, we want to see. We want to see. We want to see. And resume in some way a hidden conversation which unfolds between worlds. Experiences, contexts which at first appear so distant, never to be bridged. Sudintenland, Czechoslovakia, Czech Republic, Germany, India, Indonesia, Pakistan, Palestine, Armenia, Iran, Tehran, Bethlehem, Berlin, Berkeley, New York, Venice, Vienna, Hebron. Next. Villages, training, back, 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 back. One of the most, one of the most key, one of the most key system. Task, command, accord with Further incident fired by a, a, a further, a further source, the, into, into combat, going, going to make, going to make going to make 25 from 24 hard requirement equal shaking up live look up 
change it, destroy anything, anything, something, strike, strike with force into by particularly, particularly impressed stuff. Stuff? Mystère, mystère super. Attack, attack, battle. Opposing enemy, enemy, go back. Sea strike, to be, thereafter. Soviet machine. What do you Slow see down. here? This tent. The outpost. David Vision, it's called. You know, you're used to probably see the pictures in the newspapers of outposts like Amona, uh, illegal settlements with houses or caravans. This is one of the outposts in Hebron. We have to understand that to take this down, you need 300 soldiers, and a day later, the settlers will build it again. Me personally, took this. Down. I took this down twice during my time here in Hebron, but it's still hard. I think this is probably the way to take over the private Palestinian line in between that neighborhood as part of Kiryat Alba. That's me. That's me. You got me. I start. Let's start. What better way to address you than with images? We gathered these in the year 2006. This was a year in which we had committed ourselves to empirically search for the historical and contemporary conditions which had led Giorgio Gamben to posit with an even older friend, Walter Benjamin, that the state of exception in which we live has become the rule. That the most diabolic and unscrutinized or underscrutinized assumption of whatever could be called the democratic tradition there resides the tacit acceptance by parties on nearly all sides of the political spectrum that life can be divided, that there are two senses of life, the one we share with all living things, animals, plants, what the Greeks referred to as Zoe, and another term for life, bios, the qualified, cultured, political life, which cannot be for everyone and is reserved only for the citizens. And just as the concentration camps of the Nazis become the paradigmatic place of this life stripped of any recourse to politics, the citizen of the modern state becomes the obverse counterfigure, the one bearing, and proudly so, the special rights and privileges, its right to politics. Causing Agamben to further assert the camp as the fundamental biopolitical paradigm of the West. things happening on the Israeli side, so I mean, we, we might talk okay, to you about yeah, it, if you want to know further, yeah, it's not, it's not, it's not a time, you know, you know, during a walk, exactly, yeah, so the Sons of Abraham is a group that were 
just a new group like 10 months ago we started we call definitively it marked by this assessment which resonated so deeply with our own experiences of statelessness and near histories this was a year in which we hurled our bodies through space and time not merely seeking verification of this thesis rather looking also for the means with which those struggling against the camp or camp-like conditions and processes could also offer to us clues for a counter politics underway or to come That's how we started our group, and then we started, the main of our work is bringing guide tours to Hebron. Uh, we brought, I would say, over 1,200 Israelis here, an international student situation here in Hebron, and now, in the past three months, we started also to do some things inside Hebron. And how many people come to those? It depends. You know, Hebron is a very, very tense place. Yeah. For us, it sounds quiet. But I will give you an example. From September 2002 until, uh, I would say, uh, April May 2000. This is what we, just after this point in the walk, right? We're going to go to that scene. And, uh, ready? What's your name? I'm Ad. I'm Ad. Where's your house? Down there. Down there? No. That is a what? You like to be filmed? Yes. Why? Like that. Because images. How? Because it's about tape. Uh. Huh? Do you know the army? What do they do? They they make my life hell. They, they, they enclose us. 
They come to our house every night, like that. They come to the door. Hmm. What is the image? Can try the next one. Sure. I feel total frustration. So you feel yourself... Uh, are you, do you feel that you are in Hebron or in... No, no, I feel myself in my land, in my homeland in Palestine. Despite all the pressures, I live in my land. This is an occupier, and there will be a, a day in which they will leave. But it's their deeds that uh, upset us, like, like hitting children, uh, uh, expropriating land. Uh, I have a child, they hit his eye. I had uh, uh, horses, they gave them poison, the settlers. I had about 70 olive trees, they cut them. I have a house that they demolished, they ex exploded. Then they entered from this area. Who, who exploded your house? The IDF, the Israeli uh, forces with the, with the settlers. Uh, and then this other land also they wanted to steal. Uh, they, we brought a court case against them in the Supreme Israeli Supreme Court. Uh, and the, the, they, they, uh, uh, they, they didn't even comply to the decision of the Supreme Court to remove all, all the stuff that they added. And also this road, uh, Saturday and Friday, not an Arab, a, a Palestinian uh, passes by. Also the children during the week, uh, they are not allowed to go. Uh, on Saturday and Friday, I see the, they have to go through the, the, uh, the gardens, through, through the mountains, through the land, through the mud. Uh, also cars, you cannot enter there. If you want to buy uh, groceries, for example, where, where, where a car will, will not reach. I, I walk about two kilometers with all the stuff on my back. This area suffers a hell of a lot. It's Wadi Nasara and Wadi Hussaini, the area, of course. Uh, each, each street, you mean, has a certain story or law? They call it what it what's called the the prayers. The pray the not prayers, pray, the people who pray, uh, which is the settlers who want to go to the haram, the, the Abrahamite sanctuary in Hebron to pray. They want to make people get tired and uh, and leave, so they they want to take one house at a time. So they really damage, destroy this. Area. 50, uh, people in this area. All these people without work, without anything, all for this route, for this. Also, all the stores. What's the story of this? Uh, this uh, any Palestinian enters here, they will prison. It's only for the settlers. In that spring, we'd been invited to take part in a series of meetings which asked artists to consider and propose what art could say or do in the extreme conditions of control and deprivation of political rights which marked the experience of Palestinians. 
The specificity of the context and the artists who were taking part forced us to stay very close to what you could call a documentary approach. But maybe this letter and this work addressed to you inherently puts a question mark to what could be this approach of documentary, its limits, its presuppositions, and also maybe we propose that we have trips which in that time of curfews, road closures, and the Israeli military's heavy presence between Palestinian cities was an already extremely precarious proposition. Not knowing what barriers or detours would come our way, we waited to be concrete, and we wanted to be concrete, to work with what we found and what was told to us, what we heard, what we perceived. We decided to have only one rule for ourselves, a separate video for each day. To construct a document through traces of encounters, the spaces we passed, and what they each brought. The title for these videos, What Everybody Knows, is a reiteration from one of the people we interviewed on our trips in Kalkilia. It was how he characterized, with an added maybe, his own testimony, itself an intimate and yet commonplace portrait of being detained and tortured by the Israeli military. Basically, he said what he said. You want to know what he said? What he said is, Bijuz el kul Maybe everybody knows. But it's a passing note. It's not important to interrupt your introduction. We were not always successful in what we set out to accomplish. This footage we shape here with you, recorded in Hebron, is from one of the days in which we could not finish a video. This letter, and what is more an inscript than a postscript, allows us to become contemporary again to this material and to you, and to those we met and saw and recorded, and to weave something you did so well, a series of fragments, we weave them together from that experience and the questions which we confronted and continue to think through. Abu, 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 African, African National Congress, Al-Sisi, Anarchists Against the Wall, Angola, Apartheid Wall, Apartheid Week, Arab League, Arab Spring, Arafat, Assad, Australia, Balfour, Begin, Begin, Ben Gurion, Berlin, Bishara, Britain, Bush, Cameron, Camp David Summit, Canada, Carter, Chomsky, Clinton, Cuba, Darwish, East Jerusalem, East Timor, Egypt, ethnic cleansing of Palestine, Europe, 
European Parliament, European Union. Fatah. Finkelstein. France. Gaza. Galilee. Gaza Strip. Geneva Peace Conference on the Middle East. Great. Greater Jerusalem. Greater Israel. Green Line. Gush Etzion. Hadash. Haifa. Hamas. Harvard University. Has. Hebrew University, Hebron, for selecting our destination, we looked for and asked friends to suggest situations, persons, communities who could, by their existence, analysis, or testimonies, give presence to their fields and modes of struggle. Sometimes we did not make it to our intended destination. Sometimes we changed course. On this day, the filmmaker Avi Mograbi had called us. He suggested we join a walk in Hebron being organized for a journalist from the Spanish newspaper El País. It was being given by Yehuda, a former Israeli commander and part of Breaking the Silence, and Sons of Abraham. Breaking Silence was a group of former soldiers committed to expose the everyday crimes, violence, committed against Palestinians in the name of security by settlers and the military. This excerpt, this excerpt is from a more recent report where they collect testimonies from Israeli soldiers. Did you happen to be present during incidents of settler violence against Palestinians? I was at the base and suddenly we received the case of two settlers who left the unauthorized post of Mitzpeh Yair and attacked someone, simply attacked. Their description was provided and our forces began searching for them. Patrols, all the vehicles were called up. We gave the description of the two people who did it to the neighboring forces. There was a moment when they thought they caught them at some bus stop, but it wasn't them. They really tried and then gave up after a few hours and passed it on to the police. The Palestinian who was assaulted was badly injured. He was in hospital, had bandages, was admitted. It was a lynching. And the news articles online were really small. I think if it had been the other way around, it would have ended up, it wouldn't have ended up that way. If the description had been two terrorists walking around in Judea and Samaria, the whole world would have been up in arms. Two settlers from Mitzvah Yair. The army gave up after a few hours and passed it on. Even the following day, they couldn't tell me whether they had been caught or not. At the debriefing following the incident, one curious soldier at the table suddenly piped up and said to the company commander, so now, if I see two Arabs lynching a settler, what am I supposed to do? The company commander's sharp reply, shoot to kill. And if I saw these settlers hitting an elderly man, what am I supposed to do? The company commander nodded with his mustache and was a little stuck and mumbled an answer. It's clear to me that you have to respond somehow. I don't know how, but you have to respond. 
After another minute of awkward silence, the company commander said, good question. I need to think about it. Do you have procedures for dealing with settler violence? No, no, there's nothing. There wasn't anything decisive. The settler's starting point is always better. Okay. I think we're going to go to Dar Abu Haikal, possibly to visit and see what their life conditions are. All right. So. One more time. Okay, you wake up in the morning. What do you do? You want to go to work? The same problem. In the morning, uh, also, before my, my gate, I cannot open. I, I cannot keep it open. Because anytime I leave it open, I will find the settler here. They uh, went up to the, uh, to the roof like that. Believe me, the family is living a life of terror. If I tell you any terror film you see on TV, not even 1% that the family is living. A terror life. So you go to work and leave your mom while my sister stays because my father passed away and my mother is sick. My sister-in-law cannot uh, uh, take care of two floors. She has children. So there is no law, no rule. No, 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 they don't have any. If I have any problem between me and the settler, if I tell the IDF, the soldiers, if I tell them, the soldiers say, go to the police. And then you go to the police, they don't even open the door. So what do you feel? Like you are living on an island? What? If you live on an island, you feel it's good. There is water. There is green. No, no. It's a terror like as if I'm living in the prison of Guantanamo. Believe me, if you would live in my house for a week, you would feel that you are in Guantanamo. Whatever you see, you hear. What happens in Guantanamo, the Israelis apply here. So this way they want us to leave our house. This is part one of the interview. Oh, they are here since 1984. What? Should I tell you something? I imagine if I live abroad, I smell my breath. It will be hard for me to come back home. The other day they asked me about my daughter. You want to educate her or do you want to marry her? I told them, no, 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 I want to marry her and let her stay at home. Do you find this strange? Even though she is really very brave, very good student. I'm afraid that she would go out, she would have a fresh uh, atmosphere. Probably she will be hard for her to come back. And this house needs everyone to come back to it because they are waiting for, uh, for everyone to leave. This morning, early on, they, they started with the bulldozers, building the separation wall. What are they separating? How can I live? Since the morning, active. Yes, the separation wall, they are building it. Who, from whom are, you, are they separating? Uh, if I imagine they are at the edge of town, they are separating between Palestinians and Israelis or Arab and Jews. What, who are they separating? Whom from whom? All here are, Palest are Arabs? Yes, all Arabs. And who are they separating whom from? 
Yeah, uh, the wall is the, the, the peak of terrorism. This is, shows their uh, uh, racism. The, the smallest right of a family, which is the right to food, to buy their food. My mother, she's sick, she needs uh, uh, medicine. There's no car that comes here to pick her up. We went back to a pr primitive life. We use kerosene uh, for cooking because the, the, the gasoline uh, uh, tank I cannot carry. You cannot imagine the life. We are, we are uh, living, trying to live with fire and iron in our house. Everything, everything you, you can imagine has to be carried by hand. Also, social life, you think of go, going to visit your sister, your, your brother? Uh, even when my sister got married, I think sister, I had to stay at home because each time somebody has to stay home. Otherwise, they will come in. Didn't I tell you? They, they uh, maybe now you can see the door, the door nib turning. Uh, they are trying to check if anybody home. But also, not only the settlers, also the army, how they are so good in getting us out and searching the house. I mean, even a prison, you cannot see how many cameras they put on us. Even the bird that enters this house, they will see. Imagine the children, when the child opens his eyes, sees uh, the, uh, the soldier uh, on top of his bed at 2, 3, 4 a.m. Uh, we are putting a bag of sand on the gate so that the, the, the gate is not, because the gate is not allowed to be locked. So we have to put a bag. Uh, a prison. Uh, it's not even a zoo or a detainee, detainee camp, whatever you want to call it. They say Arabs are terrorists. I mean, I'm dying anyway. Look, when, when people see the terror that happens to the uh, terror uh, to the Palestinians, they would understand. Nobody opens their chest to death. Imagine if somebody want, if I would die with uh, 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 dignity or without dignity, then I would choose dignity. I'm, sh I'm sorry that I disturb you, but this is the life that I am living. You are showing us the, the, the life, the bitter life we are uh, living. I mean, we live our life, but when you ask us questions, it becomes a bigger problem. We know it, we live it, we know it. But when we repeat what happened, yes, I, I don't even watch television. There are things that happen that you cannot even express. It's hard to see that your life was stolen from you and you cannot live. And you see them having pleasure, taking their car, driving. What, where is the terrorism? If, if I had a car, would, would be able to arrive here. I mean, the, car, the, the street that they go on, they, they drive on, my father built it. How would you feel if you build a house, a garden, and a road 
and somebody comes takes it from you. I mean, we children were the builders for my father. He is a constructor. We were his workers at night after work. We were uh, transporting the building materials for him. And then they come and tell us, you, it's forbidden for you to come and go? I mean, my father was in a coma between life and death. I mean, he was dying and he didn't know how to die. Only we swore to him that we will not leave the house the same as he did even if they come on our corpses, on our bodies. Uh, even as I finished my sentence, he left life. Ten, ten days, he was not awake. Soft, soft. It's very, very difficult. Of course, I didn't do uh, justice to the translation, especially in the part when she is speaking about dying with dignity. Um, I mean, she has this repetition of the terrorism. What is terrorism? Uh, more through the use of the word uh, in, in relation to her own life. And then she says, nobody likes death. But if I would choose to die, I mean, I am dying anyway. And if I would die uh, with dignity or without dignity, then I would choose to die with dignity. Uh, so, I'm not sure it, it came across. Let's go to the scene. Do you, do you want to continue? Sure. Yeah, maybe you can explain that. I don't know how to explain that. Well, I can explain in simple words. Basically, as you uh, uh, said in your letter to Harun, that we went on the occasion of this uh, tour uh, with a journalist from El Pais. The tour was originally for the journalist. And here she is. You can see it in, in the image that was there right before. I can, I can. And this is a crucial moment in our tour. It was right at the beginning of our tour. Um, and um, so we met some of the settlers who, was, who were actually harassing us. But then she suddenly uh, spoke to them and decided to go with them. And she, instead of going along the tour, what she did is uh, she, she spent most of the day with uh, the chief of the settlers speaking to him in the name of objectivity or in the name of speaking to both sides. And uh, so we continued on our own. And so the, the uh, interview wi uh, with uh, the lady in Dar Abu Haikal was happened without her. She missed the details of, of speaking to the people. So she just spoke to the beginning of the introduction of the been said that the poetic dimension of any philosophy is at the level of the words, names, terminologies one uses for concepts. 
It's also been said that the philosophical dimension of anything is in its unthought, that is, in its capacity to be developed, thought, further. Maybe we could propose that the artistic dimension of anything is in its capacity to treat a block not as a mere obstacle, but as part of its conditions for existence. Art begins precisely where something no longer works. Someone is uneasy, something oppresses, something suffocates, something has been fixed into place and is no longer bearable. Art is not just a play of escape into fantasy from this blockage. Its flights are precisely what take this wall and discover a hole or a passage so wide that no one before could even see it, perceive it. It was there all along and something needed to be undone, unworked, to see it, to perceive it. Art is what confronts this limit of a non-possible, seeing the non-possibility as a possibility for life itself. But there is always this risk that it remains purely at the level of representation or image devoid of the context, the barriers, the blockages, the dysfunction or all too well functionings. And so it remains a fixed image, beautiful as it may be, but like a death mask, representing those who have already passed, died. And the life that is held captive by this blockage, detained, contained by it, is once again subsumed now inside even the image or poetry or work or unwork which tried to find a way out and this way out could not be found in the image itself but in the gesture which is inscribed in it Palestine. Palestine is a factory. I am a worker. Palestine. Palestine is a camp. I am an inmate. I am an inmate. Palestine is nowhere. I am a refugee. Palestine is everywhere. I am its uh, subject of history. Palestine uh, is a dream. I am its nightmare. Palestine uh, is a metaphor. I am its figure. Palestine is a gesture. No, 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 no. Palestine uh, is a thought process. Where is it going? school. Palestine is the cousin of my neighbor. What is the kinship? Palestine is uh, in the air. Where is it flying? What 
kind of factory is this? Factory of education. Education of what? Darkness. Silence. 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 North Jury Room. Let's go back. What is the blockage here, we ask ourselves? Is it what they call the real? Is what blocks us reality, or is it an image of reality? Is it how we perceive reality? Does reality change when our images change? Are these machines which you track so vigilantly, which shape our vision the very means by which our imaginary for other worlds and ways of living are themselves assaulted? Can we imagine a world without changing the way we think or make images? Once when watching your works for an extended period when we were organizing a seminar with you, we thought that maybe the human is not Homo Ludum, the one who plays, nor Homo Faber, the one who makes or fabricates, but in fact the one who makes or fabricates and lives in the images that it produces. But when will the images change? What was it that you wanted to show us? A friend once said that we cannot know fully a thing, and we cannot represent fully a thing, but we know the representation of a thing. For those who bear the weight of this unbearable machine of occupation and the violence of settler colonialism, whether of a permanent state of exception or indefinite detention, or the language itself, the images themselves, the regimes of understanding, thinking, speaking, acting, playing, hurting, exerting, forcing, they are real. Can we make images speak otherwise? Can we give voice to what cannot be spoken, said, uttered
something to that because uh, there's no real uh, remnant of the film. Uh, most of the remaining is with everyone who is here tonight. So uh, we thank you for being here, of course. And again, my sincere apologies for the others who spoke today that we normally don't like to not, not get to any kind of issue. But, um, yeah. So, uh, but certainly there's a, like a few minutes if there's something uh, you want to ask. Say or share, we're happy. That also can happen in the break. So it's been a long day. What was it about this one day in the film that was like, why was it that big? Well, this day was basically <coughs> we managed to uh, make of each day a video. That was the that was the rules that we set up for ourselves. We go to one situation, one place that's recommended by somebody that we talk to and explain our kind of approach that we are looking for. And then they give us a place that, they, the, that brings in the knockout a specific place, a specific person to talk to, another person in, uh, around the area. So we managed to kind of uh, wrap it in, in each day into one video. Hebron was very difficult. Uh, we, I mean, we did a lot of more further thinking, research, talking. Uh, the reason why it was difficult, I think, uh, we figured out. Maybe Renee can say. I, I can say my kind of. Well, yeah, because we started with uh, with Yehuda, who is from Breaking the Silence, and then he went on to. Uh, he he was he, you know he's uh, very passionate and he's trying to be as objective as he can. However, he started right from like the, the, with the massacre of 1929 in Hebron, and uh, basically dragged us into the history, as a video, let's say, dragged, uh, in a way. The, the narrative, it, it was difficult somehow. So basically what Renee is saying, metaphysics becomes like, the history is, becomes metaphysics through this kind of story of our, like, what the settlers say, why they are here. Even though uh, uh, it's true there was the uh, um, uh, massacre of Jewish people in 1929 in Hebron, who were Palestinian Jews who lived there for a few hundred years. Uh, but they were not Zionists, they were religious uh, Jewish people. But the circumstances, one cannot isolate it. And uh, if one researches a bit more, uh, uh, the settlers, of course, are not the, dis the, the same descendant, the families of these people. Uh, and also specifically, uh, um, several came out uh, in the 70s. There was a conference in Jerusalem from uh, descendants or, or people who were the uh, Hebronite Jewish community and said, they would not want to, uh, the settlers to go there, and they don't want to uh, claim their houses until a, a, a real solution for the um, uh, refugee all, all question and uh, all the Palestine-Israel uh, thing will be resolved. So the, there is something there, but it's um, one has to. So when what 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 happens is that what we wanted to do is more see the relation of the problems on the ground, but then it takes you to kind of how how will you you know how will you discuss this? It's uh, yeah difficult difficult to. Um, but also, I mean, like uh, there's a film by Harun Barafi that is uh, like a respite. I don't know if you've seen it, but it's footage from a kind of camp that was an intermediary camp in Holland, uh, where people were brought to the camp and then later sent to Auschwitz or where, wherever their destiny would, would be determined. And the footage is shot by someone who's going to die in Auschwitz, so he's Jewish. And also, the, the, many of the people in the film who are shown uh, dancing, singing, playing piano, doing theater, playing sports, uh, being very happy, are nearly all going to die. And so you have these images 
uh, produced inside the camp film. And uh, there are other impasses, finally, when you really go through this kind of uh, context, which is what kind of uh, images are, are you making? What are you really capturing in the context of that? And uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I think that there's a rational way to try to explain why the impasse was, but there were, there were, there, I, I don't think even in this film we could, maybe that's why it ends with what can't be said, because there's a dimension of what this maybe Hebron brought out more was a kind of impasse of our own logic to try to just stay within a day and be able to, uh, you know, it's, it's, and so there is something about, I think, whatever could be called art or an artistic dimension that is also very important, which is this kind of capacity to not cover over the blockage and uh, make it the actual materiality of the work. And that doesn't mean you'll find the words for it. It doesn't mean that you'll explain it either in a simple way. You know? so, 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 but the, but I think it's just trying to remain within that and uh, leave it for maybe this context to think about it and uh, find the words that we couldn't find. Frederico Bonacci uh, highly opened up today looking at the clips from respite and speaking out against uh, this kind of go full circle in a sense with this kind of work by Borky. Um, he's moving